In a recent tutorial, I showed you how to upgrade Contact Form 7's reCAPTCHA to version 3, and in doing so, it injected this annoying badge onto every single page on our websites. But luckily, in the YouTube comments, Travis and Steven gave us two options on how to fix that, how to remove it from pages where we don't want it. Travis's method using CSS and Steven's method using the functions.php file. I'm going to show you how to use both of them. All the code is in the blog, linked to in the description down below, and we're getting started right now. So the badge we're talking about is the one in the bottom right corner over here. When you're not hovering on it, it looks like this. If you hover, it pops out like this. And that is injected on every page of your site if you're using reCAPTCHA 3. There's no option to turn it off. So that's where these pieces of code come in, which you can find on the blog. And this page isn't quite done. There's no header image and stuff, but it'll be done at some point. Not done yet. But the important part is the CSS code that you can grab right here and the functions.php code that you can grab right here. Let's copy and paste those. I'm going to show you where to put them right now and the effect it has on the reCAPTCHA badge. So the CSS code we're going to do first. I'm going to select all of it. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to head into the dashboard of the website. And then I'm going to go to Appearance and then Customize. On the left-hand list of menu options, there's one called Custom CSS for me down here. You may have it called Additional CSS, but whatever it's called, click on it, and now we can add CSS. And the CSS you add here is going to be global, meaning it's going to happen on all pages on your website. So this badge will disappear on every page, including your contact forms. So if that's what you want, just come over here, click into our CSS editor, and paste our code in. Oh, I had an extra dot there. Get rid of that dot. Make sure your code ends in a curly bracket. I don't think that was on the blog. I don't know where that came from. Anyway, make sure there is no dot at the end. Make sure your code looks like this. And click on Publish. If you find these kind of tips and tricks helpful, make sure you click Subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any of the videos I publish. And now if we head out, it disappeared on this page already in, this, uh, in the customizer. But if we come out to our website, the original one in a different browser, we still have the badge here until we refresh and that badge will disappear and it's gone. And if I go to the contact page, the badge is also gone on the contact page, which is a place where you might want to have it. If you do want to have the code or the, sorry, the badge on the contact page and nowhere else, you want the second piece of code, which is for the functions file. So let's go back to the box, delete it from here actually, delete the CSS and then publish. And if we head back to the blog, we have our second piece of code which goes into the functions file. Copy that. Inside of our cPanel for our host or wherever you host, might not be a cPanel host, but somewhere where you access the files of your website. It can be FTP, it can be File Manager through cPanel, it can be something else. Open File Manager, go to public underscore HTML, go to content, themes, open the directory for your active theme. If you have multiple in here, you don't know which one's active, you can find out by going back to your site, click on this X to exit the customizer, and then go to appearance, click on themes. The active one is going to be the one that's on the top left. It says active, then the name of the theme. So my active theme on this site is OceanWP. So I'm going to open the OceanWP folder. You may also have a child theme, in which case You'd have, if it was OceanWP child, it'd be OceanWP dash child would be the folder. And if you're making edits to the functions file, I recommend you do it in a child theme. You don't have to, but it's often safer that you do do it in the child theme. And I have a tutorial linked to in the card up above and the description down below showing you how to make a child theme if that's the way you want to go. I highly recommend it. But for the purposes of this video, I'm just going to edit the functions file. And this would be the same way in that tutorial shows you how to create the CSS file and the functions file in the child theme. Then you just paste this code into there. And it would be a lot clearer than this. This is all the functions from the parent theme. These should not be present in the child theme. So I go to the very bottom and paste in the code. And what's important is this word contact in the array. That is the slug of the page where the contact form exists. So if I go to my contact form, over here, we see that the page is called contact. And there's another one in here called some other page with form. You may or may not need that. If you don't need it, just delete this all the way back to the comma, and it should work fine. If you have multiple forms and you set on different pages, you want to add the slug to each one of those wherever you want the badge to appear. This code is basically saying, 
if the page is not one of these, if it's not the contact page, if it's not this page, not any others you add here, then show the batch. So if I save this, we will come out here and refresh and the badge is gonna appear in the bottom right. And there it is. But if I go to this blog post, for example, about WordPress, the badge is gone. It is gone on every page except for those pages defined in the array in the code, which is right here. Those are the only pages that are, that are gonna have the badge. And this method is actually better than the CSS method because for the CSS method, the badge loads and then we hide it afterwards. This method stops it from loading. So there is a tiny bit of speed improvement by doing that. And it's also, I think, a lot more user friendly by not having this weird badge all over your website. So this is definitely the way I would do it if you're comfortable in the functions file. If you're not comfortable in the functions file, hiding it with CSS, hiding it with CSS is very viable. And if you make these changes and you notice the badge is still there, like you're expecting it to disappear or expecting it to only be in certain places, but it's not working how you expect, you might have a caching plugin installed. Disable the caching plugin, clear the cache, and then you should be able to see your changes. Once you have this all figured out, you can turn on the caching plugin again, and then you'll be ready to go. So that's how we get rid of the annoying recapture badge. I hope this video helps you. If you haven't done so yet, make sure you click subscribe and the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything. And then check out this Contact Form 7 playlist up here, which shows you how to do a whole whack load of things with Contact Form 7. And also, check out this video down here. This is what YouTube thinks you should watch. And until next time, keep crushing it, and I will see you in the next video.